My name is Sergeant Joe Fink. Work from a 24-hour shift out of homicide. And this is my workshop. The part of town that everybody knows about, but that nobody wants to see. Where the tragedies are deeper, the ecstasy is wilder, and the crime rate consistently higher than anywhere else. Skid Row. My beat. period in the history of my beat began in a little run-down floor shop called Mushnicks. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Shiva. How's things today? Oh, the same as usual, Mr. Mushnicks. My sister's nurse is Stanley died in Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, what happened? He got blown out. Who knows how? That's nice. Well, you would like maybe, as usual, some flowers for the funeral. Good old acquaintance, they forgot and never brought to mind. I thought possibly, uh, because I always give to you all my funeral business, uh, maybe you should possibly give to me uh, a little cut rate. Look on me, Mrs. Shiver. What am I, a philatelist? I sell on Skid Row nothing but cheap carnations. And I should give you a cut rate. I can't even afford water for the flowers. To my throat, I would be giving a cut. I dreamt I dwelt in marble halls with vassals... Get up from the back! Excuse me, Mrs. Shiver, that Seymour... He's a nice boy. Why don't you let him see? What? See? Look, here I got a new customer. Brand new in the yellow vest. I should let the clean-up boy, but I can't even afford chase him out right away. Flower as fresh as the springtime, Mushniks. Hello. Oh, hello, Dr. Fogg. What can I do for you today? Listen, Mushnik, I haven't got much time. Send me over two gladiolas and the fern. Excellent. That's two dozen glass, one potted fern. No, 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 Mushnik. Two gladiolas and one fern. Ah! You want I should put two gladiolas in the pot with the fern? No, one fern, one piece altogether, three pieces. I need it for my waiting room. Yeah, it's a filling What? A filling canal. Good, I'll drill a bigger hole. You mean you want two crummy gladiolas among crummy fine? What kind of a decoration is that? This is my flower budget for the week, Mushnik. Who can be a dentist on Skid Row? All right, excellent. I'll send Seymour right away. Who am I to argue with science? Mm. Make it snappy. Now you are going to get it. Oh, you are going to get it. Look. Ah! Seymour Trailboyne? Now, Mr. Shiver, we were talking from the funeral flowers, but the little... Oh, funeral! Did you call me Mr. Mushnick? No. I was calling John D. Rockefeller for to make a loan on my Rolls Royce. Sorry, I said it. Now, look, Seymour. You take two gladiolas. You'll cut them nice and even. You'll take one coin, you'll wrap them in a package, and you'll take them to Dr. Farr. Right? Don't go already! Now, what can I do for you, sir? Uh, my name is Burson Fox. Excellent. I am Gravis Mushnick. Oh, that's a good one. Now, who's going to get my roses? I'll take care of you, Mrs. Silver. Come right over here. You would like maybe some orchids for a nice girl? No, I think I'd like a couple of dozen carnations. Oh, carnations? You can't turn around these days or somebody shouldn't drop there. You've had more than your share of bad luck, Mrs. Sheva. Bad luck, she calls it. You should have so many people kick off. You would have somebody fall on the top of you, too. What about the carnation? 
See, Morris. Oh, here are your carnations. Wait, I'll wrap them for oh, you. That's all right. I'll leave them here. Why not? Of course. What else? They are all right. Well, I've had better. Well, this is a small shop. Oh, that's okay. You know those big places? They're full of pretty flowers, expensive flowers. When you raise them for looks and smell, you're bound to lose some food value. I like to eat these little out of the way places. Oh, such a thing, eating flowers. Look, don't knock it until you try it, huh? Look what happened. This is what I was trying to tell you before. Look on him, everybody. Look at the quality of his work. I ask you, when I fire him, where is he going to get such another good job? You mean I'm fired? No, I'm electing you president from the United States. Yes, you are fired. Gravis, you can't do that. Oh, who can? I didn't mean it. You didn't mean it. You never mean it. You didn't mean it the time you put up the bouquet with the get well card in the funeral parlor and sent the black lilies to the old lady in the hospital. You didn't mean it. But this time, I, Gravis Musnik, mean it. He means it. But see, Mr. Mushnick, don't I always try to do what's right? And I'm crazy about flowers. I like flowers almost as much as Audrey does. Excellent. You're fired. Why don't you give him a chance to resurrect himself? I give him a chance to quit. I ain't gonna quit. You're a brave boy. You're fired. But that ain't fair, Mr. Mushnick. You know what I'm doing? I'm working on a special surprise plant just for you. I'm growing a plant like you ain't never seen before. Excellent. I can't even sell the plants I got in my shop out, you. Now, wait a minute. He's got a new kind of plant you want to look at. I don't look on flowers, Mr. Yellow Vest. I got ancestors in the flower business for 200 years, but I got one shop on Skid Row, one stinking shop. I don't even like flowers. No, you don't understand what I mean. Look, I've eaten in flower shops all over the world, and I've noticed that the places that have the most weird and unusual plants do the best business. See? 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 What is this, a tango? All right. Explain me more. Well... I remember one place that had a whole wall covered with poison ivy. And people came from miles around to look at that wall and they stayed to buy. The owner got rich? No. He scratched himself to death in an insane asylum. Oh, that was my cousin Harry. All right. All right. You go home and you get this fancy schmancy plant and you bring it back here. And if Mr. Yellow Vest Fout says it's a draw, you still got a job. If he don't, out you go to Bodie, right? Don't worry, you'll like it. You'll see. <laughs> K. You've been listening to Music for Old Invalids. Our next selection is entitled Sick Room Serenade. Hey, Morris, you? Yeah, Ma. Hey, you're not the mic, huh? But, Ma, I already seen your tongue. Have you no sympathy for your poor mother? Laughing at her and mocking her realness and she's got one foot in the grave? Oh, I didn't mean it. Oh, you never mean it. Oh, come on, look at my tongue. A tongue's a tongue, Ma. They all look the same to me. Oh. Did you stop at Dr. Mallard's and get the results of my test? Yeah, he said there's nothing wrong with you. Oh, now, Dr. Mallard. He, he's one doctor I thought would tell the truth. He said you should be playing fullback for the Rams. He wants me dead. I'll bet he's assistant coroner. Ma, I gotta go. I... Hey, you know, I ran in my goiters coming back. I can feel it every morning after breakfast. Yeah, that's when you take those great... Oh! What you got, a little surprise for me? Open it up and see. All right. <gasps> Dr. Slurp Saddle, famous tonic. Wait here. To be taken internally or externally for pain and neuritis, neuralgia, headache. If hit by a truck, call your physician. Alcoholic contact. 98%! <laughs> oh, Seymour, you never know what this is going to do for me. Oh, I can feel 
that surge of warm health going through me already. <laughs> Look, Ma, I gotta get my plant and hurry back to the shop. You mean that lousy weed out in the kitchen? Yeah, and if Mr. Mushnick doesn't like it, he's gonna fire me. Apparently, my hearing's going out on me. I get the distinct impression that your job security depends on what Mushnick thinks of that thing. It looks worse than it did this morning when I went to work. I wish I knew what to do with it. Well, if you asked me, I'd pitch it out in the trash. I don't like my house cluttered up with rotten vegetables. Look, Ma, i got to hurry. Can I bring you anything? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bring me the evening news. They're running a, a self-diagnosis contest. The winner gets to go to the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> Bye, Ma. Bye, sir. I'll see you the rosy edge of dawn. Drink to me, old. Way inside night, and I will. Hey, put this on myself. Well, here it is, everybody. What do you think of it? Well, it sure is different. It looks delicious, but don't you think it's kind of stale? It hasn't been feeling too well. You call that a fancy plant? It looks like it never spent an LT day in its entire life. I don't care. I like it anyway. You, you like even skunk cabbage. Yeah. What kind of a plant is this, Seymour? Well, I'm not sure. I got the seeds from a Japanese gardener over on Central Avenue. He found them in with an order he got from a plantation next to a cranberry farm. Fine, fine. You don't even know what is this plant you're growing. Well, well I gave it a name. What name? Uh, gee. What? You gave it a dirty name? You can't even mention it? Well, I named it Audrey Jr. <laughs> That's the most exciting thing anyone's ever done to me. You poor kid. I don't think it's so much I should keep on spending $10 a week on your salary. But, Gravis, he named it after me. I know, and if they keep it, they'll name it Mushnick's Folly because I'll be in jail for non-payment of taxes. Are you crazy? Who, who? You, you. That's probably the only plant of its kind in the world. But you realize if Seymour can nurse that thing back to health, you'll have people coming here from all over? You think so, you found it? I know so, you Mushnick. And that's all I'm saying on the subject. Besides, I've got to get home. My wife's making gardenias for dinner. Good night, you flowers. Good night. And I'll see you tomorrow. Crazy about kosher flowers. He's a nice man. Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Maybe he's not so stupid. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll keep you and this dumbbell junior for a week. If you can nice it back to health, you both can stay. If you can't, you're both fired. Oh, gee, thank you, Mr. Mushnick. Feel sad, Seymour? Don't waste your pity on me, Audrey. I'm not worth it. Who says you're not? Everybody. Yeah, I know. But I think you're a fine figurative of a man, and I know that Audrey Jr. will be the sweetest thing in the whole wide world. Well, I don't know. I've given it every kind of fancy fertilizer and atomic plant food and distilled mineral water you can buy, but it just gets thicker and thicker. Don't worry. You're going to be another Luther Glendale. Pasadena. Burbank. Good night, Seymour. Good night, Audrey. What's the matter, little plant? Haven't I done everything I could for you? Where did I go? You're the first little plant I ever tried to grow, and if you die, I don't know what I'll do. Please don't die. I'll get you some water, okay? Opened up just like you do every night at sunset. I wish I knew how to make you grow. Here, let me move this out of your way so you can breathe. Ow! 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 ow. Hey, what happened? How come you woke up? Blood? You like blood? Oh, you must be kidding. Well, we'll see. What I'm doing for you. Ow! Oh, who would have 
just bought it. Well, I guess there's just no accounting for people's taste. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he delicious? Isn't he got the two dollar raise? What happened to your fingers? These things. I saw how come I'm all of a sudden so wonderful. Five bees, one for each finger? Ten bees. Did you say I was getting a two dollar raise? Correct, my very excellent Seymour. Ten bees. What did I do now? Don't you know what you did? Oh, boy, look at that. It's true. It's almost a foot long. Isn't it a period? It grows like a cold sore from the lip. Oh, hello, young pretty ladies. What can Gravis Mushnik do for you? Well, we saw your sign outside. About the Audrey Junior. So we thought we'd come in and take a look. Well, give a look. That makes four people a day who've come in just to look at it. Oh, did sure. Is that just too much? Oh, what kind of plant is it? It's an Audrey Junior. Where was it you got in trouble with 10 bees? Well, is that all? I mean, doesn't it have a scientific name? Yes, of course, but who could denounce it? You oh. would like maybe to buy something. Well, we don't have any money, except $2,000. <laughs> but that's just to spend on flowers. So we don't have any of our own. Isn't that a drag? You got your $2,000 just for to spend on flowers? Mm -hmm. That's right. Who died? The Chamber of Commerce? Well, we're from Cucamonga High School. We're building a float for the rose bowl parade. Which is made out of flowers. Flowers is on them. And we're on the committee that picks the flowers and then glues on the flowers. <sighs> Gee, that sure is a mad plan. Oh, yeah. Seymour here invented it. He did. Oh, thousands of oh, 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 Girls, 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 please don't oh. damage the horticulturist. Tell me, how come you don't buy all these thousands of flowers from Gravis Mushnik? My flowers got something the others don't. What's that? The cheek. Well, gee, if your shop is good enough to develop the Audrey Jr., I guess it can get us everything we need. Yeah, we'll talk it over with the rest of the committee. Excellent. Well, we got to run now. Bye, all. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye, girls. A son. A son. Look, Audrey. I got a son. Oh, I see, Mr. Mushnick. What, Mr. Mushnick? I don't want you should call me Mr. Mushnick anymore. I want you should call me Dad. Okay, Dad. Isn't that beautiful? Seymour Krellboyne, come over here, my son. I want to talk on you about the future. Look on this fly trap. Look on it. Soon we got no more skid row. We will be rich, us. I am building for you a giant greenhouse in which you are making impossible flowers, which in turn I am selling at ridiculous prices in my giant new flower saloon in Beverly Hills. Do you see that big sign in the sky? It is saying, Gravis Mushnik in French. Isn't that exciting? And we'll have an orchestra right by the cash register. And Gravis will wave his arms. And the orchestra will play Mendelssohn's and Spring Song. And I'll come out in a gown wrapped by somebody expensive and say, The carnations are $600 a dozen, two dozen for a thousand. It's a bargain. Get it while they laugh. My uncle Marsh is dubby. Uncle just passed away. He's trying to fly New Jersey. <laughs> Tell me, how much are the carnations today? The carnations are six hundred dollars a dozen. And why are they letting him run around loose? <laughs> please, please excuse my son, Mrs. Shiver. Just point to anything in the store, and this is yours. I mean, that's right. The cash register, maybe, huh? Wait a minute. Here, here are several dozen carnations. On the house, courtesy of Gravis Mushnik, the Bloom Tycoon. That's my dad. Thanks. Thanks very much. Only tell me, why are you so happy? Not only did my uncle Moses' brother and Yankel die, can it bring New Jersey? You should also get some flowers to that put that plant there. Good morning, Mr. Mushnik. Good morning. Look what happened to my plant, Dad. Who are you calling Dad? Who, who? Oh, no. And it was so beautiful just a few seconds ago. Excellent. Just a few seconds ago, I gave away dozens of carnations free to Mrs. Shiver. I didn't mean it. You have perhaps an explanation. No, but if you give me a minute, I'll think of one. I can see it all now. 
We are in the poor house. That big sign in the sky, it is reading, Seymour Krellboyn, rest in peace, in Arabic. Oh, you've got to give him another chance. You promised me a week, Mr. Marshnick. I'll sit up all night with that plant. It'll be healthy in the morning, you'll see. I promise. I promise. I've never been to college and I ain't been around much. But I'd have been willing to bet there ain't no such thing as a talking plant. But I'll take your word for it. Gee, Junior, I'd, I'd like to feed you. But I used up all my fingers. Feed me! Oh. Look at me, I'm all cut to pieces. But maybe I can find another drop here someplace. Mm -hmm. That's the best I can do. Mar, Mar. But I'm already anemic. Feed me Mar. Gee, Junior, I'd be happy to give you anything I got, but I gotta keep a little blood for myself, or I'll be in worse shape than Mar. Hmm. I'm sorry, Junior. Well, I'll go for a walk. Maybe I'll think of something. Problems of my own. Feed me. I'm sorry, pal. I'm fresh out of blood. Talk to somebody else. <laughs> I'm hungry. I don't care what you are. 
Can't you see I'm knocked out? I just killed a man. I'm a murderer. You think it's fun to be a murderer? You think it's fun to fall around a sack full of food? Oh, no, Junior. What kind of guy do you think I am? <laughs> I'm starved. Well, maybe just a sack. Now, that is what I call a salad. What do you call that salad? A farian. Well, before the next course, I think I'll have a nice cigar. You all right? You would like maybe a cigar? <laughs> <laughs> you don't smoke cigars. What am I thinking about? Where are the matches? Oh, oh. You know what I found? I'm looking for the matches. And I found I left the money in the other suit. Here's your mock chicken leg. You don't have any money? So what else is new? All right, all right. I made a mistake. After all, a man is entitled. Go on, this is your story. I'll wait for the punch. Don't get smart with me, girlie. I'll have you know that in my shop in the cash register, I'm having the total day's receipt, which is summing up to more than $9. You'll bring the rest of the food, then I'll go to the shop and get the money. You're playing my favorite song. Now look here, Buster. One of you is going to go down right now and get the loot, while the other one stays here until the first one gets back, if you get what I mean. Oh, fine. In this fancy-schmancy restaurant, you are holding hostages, right? All right. Excellent. You eat up, Audrey. I'll be back in a flash with the cash. Bye, Gravis. Did you bring the money? Don't bug me with the money. I got to get drunk now. What flipped him? I don't know. Here, take it. Bring me anything. Bring me everything. Cram them in. Everything you got. Okay. Grab it. What happened? Don't ask. You look like you've seen a ghost. Ghosts I could handle. Don't ask. Why don't you tell me? Maybe I could help you. Help? You couldn't. Try and eat something. It'll calm your aggravation. In my own shop. Audrey, you wouldn't believe it. I wish you'd break out and tell me. All right, I'll tell you tomorrow, right after I am telling the police. But Mushnick didn't come to the police. If he had, that might have been the finish of the unhappy story. It was not. in selling a half inches to this place, huh? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mushnick, we talked to the committee, and they said we could use your flower on the smooth. Hey, guess what? We're going to feature Audrey Jr. Right on top. Boy, Can't you just picture it? I can picture it. Oh, won't the people just eat it up? Eat up the people. And we're going to have the big part of it open, so she can sit in it. Oh. The queen, with her crown and scepter. She'll be so cute. Oh, you could just eat her up. Eat up the girl. Oh, there's You 
come. Oh, my God, you're a What do you want to talk about? That plant. Is that a nice subject for to talk? The plant. The plant is great. It's it's four times bigger than it was yesterday. I saw. I saw. How come the plant is now so big? Oh, I don't know. But look at all them people out there. We only been open a half hour. We already done seventy dollars worth of business. Eighty-five. Now look, Seymour. You gave this plant a fancy name, Audrey Junior. But I want to know right now, what do just people call it? Well. It's a cross between a Butterworth and a Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap? And what are the habits of this Venus flytrap? Well, the book says it eats insects. It eats them three times in its life, and then it's full grown. Excellent. And how many times is this one eat? Well, once or twice. You don't remember? Well, this is kind of an unusual type flytrap. That is a possibility. It may never eat again. I don't see how it could get any bigger. Then you think it don't need any more flies? Yeah. Oh, my tooth is just killing me. All right, excellent. You run along to the dentist. I'll take care of things here. Thanks, boss. <gasps> Crowder, we've got to order more flowers. Tons of them. I'm making lots of money. Shut up and open up. Uh-huh. Ah. Oh, oh. Does that hurt? Yeah. Good, you haven't felt anything yet. Uh-huh. It just goes over here. Seymour, who is the dentist here, you or me? I'll find that tooth. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Look at that stalagmite. But, but don't worry, it's going to be an easy one, Seymour. I won't even use Novocaine. Oh, you broke the mirror in my mouth. Well, don't tell me about it, stupid. Just swallow it. <clears throat> All right, yes. Let's see now, Seymour. See, I'll have this one and this one and that one, and I have to have this one, it's Seymour. It's only one, two. Seymour, who is the dentist here, you or me? Are you practicing dentistry without a license? No. All right. Uh -huh. Let's see. Uh, oh, shh. Seymour, oh. Seymour, oh. don't oh. be Look at that. Will you look at that, Seymour? I didn't know you were an elk. Look. You know, I can't afford an assistant. So I get this ready instant mix. It doesn't last very long, but it tastes good. Mm. All right, Seymour. Oh, stay away from me. Seymour. Uh, you're trying to kill me. A duel. Aha. Who? <laughs> Is Dr. Farb's office? Uh, just a minute. <clears throat> oh, yeah. <laughs> I see it is. <laughs> uh, you, you can come in now. <laughs> My name is Wilbur Force. Wilbur Force what? Just... Wilbur Force. My first name is Wilbur. My last name is Force. <laughs> I don't have a middle name. Well, you have an appointment, maybe? 
No, but you were very highly recommended to me by one of your patients, a Mrs. S. Sheba. I do a lot of undertaking for her relatives. <laughs> well, as you can see, I have a customer now, and I'm all booked up for the rest of the day, so you'll have to come back tomorrow. Oh, I couldn't do that. I have three or four abscesses, a touch of pyorrhea, nine or ten cavities, I lost my pivot tooth, and I'm in terrible pain. <laughs> well, I, I can't help you today. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll just wait outside. <laughs> The patient came to me with a large hole in his abdomen <laughs> caused by a fire poker used on him by his wife. <laughs> he almost bled to death and gangrene had set in. I didn't give him much of a chance. There were other complications. <laughs> the man had cancer, tuberculosis, leprosy, and a touch of the grip. <laughs> I decided to operate. My, my patient just left. You, you could come in now. Oh, goody. <laughs> I didn't see the other man leave. Well, he went out the back door. You know, most people don't like to go to the dentist, but I rather enjoy it myself, don't you? <laughs> I mean, there's such... There's a real feeling of growth, of... of <laughs> progress when that, that old drill goes in. I mean, I'd almost rather go to the dentist than anywhere, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> now, no Novocaine. It dulls the senses. <laughs> this is gonna hurt you more than it is me. Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I made a lot of holes, and now i got to fill it up with this here silver stuff. Well, aren't you going to pull any? Well, uh... Oh, go on. Well, your mouth. Quite an afternoon. I can truly say I've never enjoyed myself so much. I'll recommend you to all my friends. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. Feed me. Oh, take it easy, Dracula. What do you think I'm carrying here? My dirty laundry? Mm. Well, goodbye, Dr. Farr. You may have been a crummy dentist, but you were a nice fella. I never meant to kill anybody in my whole life. I've killed two in the last two days. Well, but you asked for it coming after me with that knife and all. Fun voyage, Dr. Farr. You want anything else? See you in the morning. Glad to hear it. The kids? Lost one yesterday. Lost one, eh? How'd that happen? Playing with matches. Well, those are breaks. Yeah, I guess so. Got a strange one here. Railroad people say they lost one of their best detectives the other night. Oh, yeah? Down by the yards. He's watching the refrigerator cars. Refrigerator cars? Ice thieves. Oh, yeah? What happened? Don't know. Vanished. Blood on tracks. Who's? None. Anything else? Dennis. Bob. Dead? Missing. Clues? Blood in office. Where? Skid Row. Ideas? None. Check it out? Yeah. Nothing. 
now we were on the case. Officer Frank Stooley and me. My name is Fink. Sergeant Joe Fink. I'm a Fink. You don't like to kiss me. Why shouldn't I? Nobody else ever did. Well, I do like to. You do? You really do? You like to kiss me? Yeah, I do. Would you like to kiss me again? Okay. That plant? Oh, boy, you kiss good, Audrey. Oh, I guess I just have a good kisser. How, how, how did, it, did, it, did it? Would you like to go out on a date with me some night? When? Oh, sure I would, Seymour. Anytime. Tonight? Okay. Oh, boy. Uh, about that plant. We got the list of flowers for the clothes, for the rose parade. I can't talk to you now, girls. Talk on Audrey. Well, we got the list for the float. Okay, let's take a look at it. Okay. Hi, right, what's cooking? Look at my plant. My, what a large one. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Shiva. What's new? Oh, I got terrible news. My nephew Frankie just lost his little boy. Oh, that's too bad. How did it happen? He was playing with matches. Would you like to buy maybe some flowers? Yeah, about 50 cents worth. Well, I'll get them for you. Look at my plant. Oh, I'm looking. Your name Gravis, much name? Look, I'm a motion at Gravis. I think that's my name. Just want to ask you a few questions. Questions, ask me. Just about. want to ask you a few questions. I, I didn't do it. Do what? Whatever. Ever see this man? Man, see pictures. Or, uh, Why are you so nervous? You got a guilty conscience? No. Why should I? Ever see this man? Man, uh, see the, the, the picture, Doctor Fogg. So you know him? And my dentist. Uh, he, he, he maybe did something. Disappeared. Blood in his office. The other man too. Blood in the railroad tracks. A few spare parts. Oh, okay. that, 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 Doctor Fogg is murdered. Is he? No, well, who knows? Not me. What do you think? He doesn't know anything. Okay, Mushnik. If you hear anything about these men, call our office. Sure, I'll be glad to cooperate with the police. Hello, I'm sitting. Oh, isn't it terrible what happened to your boy, Frankie? Those are the brakes. All right, Seymour. Now you tell me if that plant is finished all grown up. He's finished all growing up. You wouldn't kid your father. My father came home. Me, idiot! It's a finger of speech. Now look, I can't stand any more of that plant. It's growing me out of house and home. Well, it ain't gonna grow anymore, I promise. How can you be so sure? It ate three times already. Who, I mean, what did it eat this time? Well, about, about a million Japanese beetles. So don't eat no more. It's full. Grab it. There's a lady from some kind of a commitment outside. I think it's important. Excellent. By the by, I understand you want to take Audrey out on a date tonight. That's very good with me, because I am staying to keep an eye on that Meshugana plant. Where are we going to go tonight, Seymour? Oh, I just remembered I don't have any money. Well, that's okay. We could take a walk along the ocean or something. I got a great idea. We can eat dinner at my house. My mom's a great cook. Well, that's swell. Oh, boy, I'll call her later and tell her. Okay. Oh, that's remarkable. You like? Oh, I neither like nor dislike anything, my goodness. I happen to represent the Society of Silent Flower Observers of Southern California. How about that? Tell me, who created this magnificent bloom? I did, me. Uh, and what might your name be? Seymour Krellboyne with a K. 
Krell Boyne. Krell Boyne. Raised it in a coffee can. This? Uh, well, tell me, Mr. Krell Boyne, uh, is this a freak or, or can more be raised from the sea? We should live so long. Well, I don't think there are going to be any more, Miss... Uh, uh, Fischtwanger. Mrs. Hortense Fischtwanger. Uh, I think this is going to be the only one, Mrs. Fischtwanger. 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 Uh, it's probably indigestible anyway. <laughs> At any rate, I have the honor to tell you, Seymour Crowboyne, that you have been selected to receive the annual trophy of the Society of Silent Flower Observers of Southern California. A trophy? Me? Such is justice. But tell me, when do you suppose those large buds will open? Well, according to what the book says about the plants that I crossed, they should open day after tomorrow at sunset. Ah, very well. Then I shall return at that time to present the trophy. Good day. Remarkable. Oh, boy, I'm going to get a trophy. Oh, Seymour, I'm so proud of you. Oh, a real trophy for Audrey Jr. We can put it on the floor in the road parade. Oh, boy. Don't look at me. I I'm a terrible sight. I I'm a complete sea hag. She always says that. Oh, well, it's true. I haven't been feeling very well lately. Audrey, this is my ma, Winifred Krellboyne. Ma, this is Audrey Fulcourt. She's my girl. Hi, Audrey. Are you hungry? I sure am. I could eat a hearse. Oh, <laughs> well, sit right down, and I'll go get the first course. <laughs> sit here, Audrey. You want me to take your sweater? Yeah. Never mind that. <laughs> well, well, now try this. <coughs> it tastes like cough syrup. Psst, Dr. Flynn's cough syrup. A toast? To Audrey Jr. No, to Audrey Sr. an eye on you. I don't let nobody get near you. Come the soup. I don't touch it till I get the, the flavoring. <laughs> Gee, Audrey, you sure look good by candlelight. Oh, do I really see more? Yeah. Here you are. I'll try it. Sure smells different. It's different. Some kind of oil, isn't it? God, liver oil. It's wonderful for the colon. And that's sulfur powder on the top. Kettlefin fish. Who would you like to have tonight? You look fat enough. We not only got a talking plan, we got one that makes with smart cracks. Will you listen to me, you botanical bum? Food you wouldn't get. Not from Gravis Mushnik. I'm starved. Excellent. You would unpopulate the old skid row. Well, you can forget about it. You wouldn't get fed from Gravis Mushnik tonight. Good night. 
bitter. It's because it's made of Chinese herbs and it's flavored with acromyosin, Epsom salts. There ain't another cook in the whole world like my ma. That's what your old man said before the louse ran out on me. You know, if you're gonna be married, you gotta be a good cook. Well, maybe you could teach me. You think me getting married? Well, he hasn't asked me yet. Who hasn't? Seymour. Seymour's too young to get married. Look here, a boy's gotta go out and play around a little bit. Go out on the making. Have a ball. Gee, Ma, I don't want to have a ball. I want to be with Audrey. Oh, no, no, oh, Seymour. You promised you wouldn't get married until you bought me an iron lung. Well, you've been breathing for years, Ma. Well, it ain't easy. It ain't easy, son. I wouldn't know it even a fly. Come out in the light where I can see you. Come on. Please don't shoot. Please. Please. I'm on the gravest motion. If you wouldn't want to kill me, where would you hide the body? Don't worry, I'm not going to shoot you. Not unless you try something. Try something? I never tried anything in my life. I wouldn't try anything now. You want my money? Take it. You want I should go out and steal you some more? That's all right, too. I'll do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I like your brand of hospitality. You'll excuse if there's more. I'm only a poor florist. Yeah, yeah. We got about 30 bucks here. Come on now. Where's the rest of it? I was in here this afternoon. I saw about 30,000 people in here. They must have spent some money. Where is it? There ain't no more money. They came in to look on the plant. It's a big attraction. Audrey Jr. The plant. Don't try to snow me, Jim. 30,000 squares didn't come in here just to look for a plant. I want it. They, 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 I don't got no more money. Honest. Believe me. Okay, let's try this. One, two, three, four. No, I ain't got no more money, honest. All right, try it the other way around. Five, four, three, two. All right, all right, I'm ready. Okay, big bad, where? In the plant. In the plant. The big plant, Audrey Jr. Inside the big leaf. That's right, inside. How <laughs> do you get it open? Just knock. In there. In there. Inside. In the bottom. I don't see anything. Way inside. Right in the back. You got it a date with Audrey tonight. I am no more sitting up with that no good new plan. But gee, Mr. Mushnick, you don't have to sit up with it anymore. It's all grown up now. Excellent, smart guy. How do you know it don't be hungry no more? Well, because... Tonight you are staying. Then tomorrow they're coming and they're going to give you a trophy. And then after that, we are getting rid once and for all for that plan. Getting rid of it? Why? Don't ask why, why. The end. Into the garbage can. Aloha. Oi. Yes, Mrs. Shiva. Oh, Seymour. It's a wonderful plant. Oh, that's all right, Audrey. I'll grow other plants, even more wonderful ones. I know you will. Did you figure out what we're doing tonight? Yeah, we're going to a place full of beautiful flowers. We have to stay here. Yeah. Well, never mind. We'll have a picnic. 
It'll be just like going to the country. Oh, you boy. 3,000 pink azaleas for the arbor and the 9,000 yellow moths for the, for, for the border. Yeah, and the, yeah. the roses yeah, for the front for and the back. Right around the back. What do you mean you're going to a picnic at night with that full quart girl? Don't you like Audrey Ma? She's out after your money. I don't have any money. Oh, she's a smart one. She'll latch on to you until you get some, and then goodbye fortune. But Audrey's an honest girl, Ma. Yeah, never trust a woman who's too healthy. But Audrey had a bad cold a couple of weeks ago. Oh, a cold, a puny cold. Why don't you get yourself a real female with something decent like manana eucleosis or, or gallstones? Well, maybe she could catch something like that. The only thing she'll catch is you. And she'll take you off to some shady sanitarium and leave me to chiropractors and faith healers. I know when I'm not wanted. Oh, oh gee, Ma. Don't feel sorry for me. I'll just find a nice wet alley somewhere and curl up and wait for the end. Oh, please don't die till I get back, will you, Ma? I'll take care of you. I'll always take care of you. I promise. Yeah. Bye. Mm -hmm. Gee, Audrey, I never tasted food like this before. The peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Peanut butter and jelly, what does that cure? Nothing, it's just a food. Well, what good is it if it doesn't clear up pimples or shrink your sinus tissues or something? You're just being silly, Seymour. Seymour, what do you want to be? Well, I want to grow things. If I had a lot of money, I'd go to the South Seas where they grow the most fabulous plants in the world. Well, that sounds exciting. Yeah. I'd like to go to the South Seas, too. There's no reason why you couldn't go. Would you take me with you, Seymour? Oh, I couldn't very well go without you, Audrey. Why not? Well, because... because I'm in love with you, Audrey. Oh, I'm in love with you, too, Seymour. <laughs> What'd you say? I, I was just kidding. I'm hungry. Seymour! I didn't mean it. Why did you say it? You didn't even say that. Oh, yes, I did. I said it. I said it. Oh, I'm looking right at you. Uh, well, I'm a ventriloquist. You're what? A ventriloquist. Seymour, do you feel all right? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, then stop all this nonsense and kiss me. I'm dying from hunger. All right, if you're so hungry, eat something, but forget about me. Gee, I'm sorry, Audrey. Give me to eat. You can't control yourself. I'm going home. I need some chow. Oh. Uh, I need stomach. Audrey, please wait. Listen to me. I've listened to all the nonsense I want to hear, Seymour. You're a nut. You tell me that you love me, and then you act like a complete idiot. Please listen, Audrey. I'll be able to explain everything soon. But why can't you explain now? Because so many things are so important. I want to marry you, but I got to take care of Mom. Well, that plant in there is going to make it all come true. Tomorrow they're going to give me a trophy and I'll be famous. I'll be a big botanist. And then we can go to the South Seas, just like we planned and but all. But that doesn't have anything to do with what went on in there. When you're ready to come to your senses, Seymour, then I'll talk to you. Good night, Seymour. I'm getting pretty tired of you. I need food. I don't care what you need. Look what you've done to me. You not only made a butcher out of me, but you drove my girl away. Shut up and bring on the food. Don't tell me to shut up. You shut up. Who raised you from a bunch of little seeds? Who fed you all them high-class fertilizers and sat up all night with you when you were sick? Nobody else would have done that for you. Do you think anybody else would have brought you human beings to eat? You're darn right they wouldn't. Well, I've helped you, and you've helped me. Now shut your trap and go to sleep. I'm tired. Crowboy! Close your eyes. You are asleep. Open your eyes. Now you will do as I say. Do you follow me? Yes, Master. You will go out and find me some food. Yes, Master. Now be gone and waste no time.
My name is Leonora Clyde. How's the rain on the rhubarb? Master is hungry. I got to find food for Master. Food I got to find for Master. For Master, I got to find food. Maybe I can help. Who are you? My name is Leonora Clyde. I love you. Master wants food. Let the old goat wait. The night is young, so are we. Master doesn't eat goats. Well, what kind of food does he like? Ooh! <laughs> That's more like it. Kiss me. What's the matter? Don't you like me? Too bony. Too bony? Nobody ever told me that before. Beef is better than veal. Ah, oh, you're such a dodo. What do you call this? Chopped liver? <laughs> Master would like more fat. Speak for yourself, John. My name is Seymour. My name is Seymour. That's my name, too. Uh, are you interested or are you just wasting my time? I never thought anybody would volunteer. Do you volunteer? Sure, I do. All right, if you're sure you want to volunteer. All right, my place or yours? I don't care. Well, flip a coin. I don't have a coin. Flip anything, silly. Well, there's a rock. Wet or dry? Wet. search was narrowing, and we knew that soon we would have the killer. Not that we had any more clues than before, but we had to tell the chief something. I had that feeling in my bones that the mystery was drawing to its climax, and I was determined to be on hand. All right, out, out, out. Nobody is in. Today we have a special occasion for Seymour Crowboyne, which has invented the big plan. So I want everybody to please stay out of the way. We want Seymour! We want Seymour! We want I tell you, this business is worse than being a conductor in a revoluting door. I'll be glad when this day is finished. But the celebration. They're presenting my son with a trophy. Yeah, what do you do, run away from home? Please don't look at me that way, Audrey. I want to talk to you. I'm sorry, Seymour. I just don't understand you. I'll explain everything after the ceremony. You, police, what are you doing here? Hey, there was something going on here this evening. Just thought we'd come by and keep an eye on things. Look, we don't need no eyes kept on nothing. Everything. Way, the society is silent. Flowery observers has arrived, and sunset is almost upon us. Welcome, lady and gentlemen. We are honored for to have you. Still working on those disappearances. We think they were murdered. Hey, look here, young man. That's no way to talk at a time like this. Let me see your tongue. Uh huh. Now what you got? That's just the facts, ma'am. Trench mouth. I know, I had it back in Aunt Nine. Better have that looked into, Frank. Whatever you say, Joe. Uh, Mr. Crowboy, uh, the sun is going down now, and uh, you do think those buds are going to open? I hope so. Because if they don't, Mr. Crowboy, we shall just have to present the award at another time. Oh, oh it's starting to open! It's the mark. Open. Isn't that the railroad cop? Look at the rest. What do you think, Frank? They're all there, Joe. Yes, 
Yes, you're right. Mr. Carboy, how do you explain it? I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. That's right, officer. He didn't mean to kill them. Oh, Timo, you promised you'd explain. Looks like they're getting away, Joe. Yes, you're right. Let's catch him. Right. Yes, oh, now the float will be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't find them here with the toilets. Let's go back. You tidy rat plant, you messed up my whole life. to give up, Judson. You wouldn't find him tonight. Look, the door's open, Frank. Yeah. He was such a good boy. Seymour! 
I didn't mean it. I had to go to the Santa Domingo bar, and I had to find Agent XK120, whom I'd never met. I looked around the room. Long training and my own instinct told me that the girl sitting at the table seemed the most likely prospect. supposed to be a political remark? I don't know anything about politics. Do you play? I never work if I can help it. I meant chess. It's a very interesting game. So is this one we're playing. Would you like a drink? I wouldn't mind. But waiter, bring us a bottle of Chateau Marmont 1907. 
1911 was a better year. 1911 it is. We don't have any Chateau Marmont, but we have a good Chateau Briand in 1922. Forget it. Make it a couple of rum columns, Cuba 58. He said. I had to be sure it was you. XK120? Right. XK150? Right. Who's the waiter? One of them. Thinks I'm on their side. She was beautiful. I could have killed myself for wearing this stupid disguise. Now she would never know me as I really am. I'm leaving tonight. We'll keep in touch by radio. You have the code. In point of fact? Yes. In point of fact? Yes. In point of fact, I've got my Dakota ring. Right. Pay no attention to me when I leave. Right. Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? Right. The 20th century occurred in Havana, Cuba. The revolutionary victors marched in and the national complexion changed completely. They had been liberated. The survivors of the old regime escaped as best they could, taking with them only a few meager effects, such as the Cuban treasury and other art objects. It wasn't always easy to smuggle a loot out of Cuba, and so secret meetings were being held all over the island. This story of robbery, double cross, and murder begins with just such a meeting. Renzo Capetto? I am. Who are you? Never mind who I am. It's the mission that counts. Let's get on with it. As an American gambler and gangster, you're above suspicion. Of course, you know that our government has been overthrown. You know, I heard that. Shut up. But not for long. We'll be back. And if you think you're seeing executions now, oh boy. Bravo. Bravissimo. Uh, but, of course, in order to uh, finance a great counter-revolution, it has been necessary for us to uh, steal the Cuban treasure. Oh, uh. Shut up. Let us proceed. You're going to lose your casino, so you'll be leaving Cuba anyway. You have a big yacht, and you can leave any time you wish, such as immediately. Therefore, I'm going to entrust you a solemn trust. Here we have one-fourth of the Cuban treasure. Your group 
General Tostada, Coronel Cabeza Grande, and a squad of men will proceed to Ciudad Trujillo. There you'll wait for us to contact you and relieve you of the money. One fifth of which will be paid to you. Do you understand? I get the whole picture. Now you do the rest. Señores? General Tostada, Coronel Cabeza Grande, Señor Renzo Capetto y... Uh... My name is Happy Jack Monahan. Glad to meet you, Jim. Mis buenos amigos americanos, nos cabe el honor de preservar el honor del honor cubano. En un solemne acto de confianza han confiado en nuestras confiables manos ese botín con el cual reconstruiremos todo lo que Castro piensa construir. Yo os saludo. And now, the gold. You two had better get into the car. The general doesn't know any English, Senor Capero. I'll be his translator for you. Bueno? Bueno. Bueno. Metanse al auto. Now it's time to go. Adios. Adios. I'll see you later, huh? Hello. first move in the great conspiracy had been made. The Cuban treasury was now in the gentle hands of Renzo Capetto, the most trustworthy man ever to be deported from Sicily. They thought they were smart, but little did they know that I, Sparks Moran, was an American agent. Luckily, I had been able to work my way into the crew by posing as a notorious gum machine burglar from Chicago. My real name is XK-150. Hey, you. Come on down here and help with this. How'd it go, Booksy? We had a hairy little chase, but we got the stuff. Crazy. Hey, Colonel Grande, you can bring your men aboard. What happens with all that mob? I don't know. I thought we'd just have an officer or two, but it looks like we're going to have a little difficulty. You will think of a way to remove them and grab that loot? Because you're my big. Strong, swinging brain. Mm. You're sweet, baby. Hi, sis. Hi, baby doll. Did they scare you? Ah, uh, just a little. Oh. All right, boys. Get ready to go. Pete, take the wheel. Jack, you and uh, Clark's uh, Sparks, get ready to cast off. Well, well, this is a beautiful night for sailing. And so we left Cuba forever, sailing the most astounding adventure to be inflicted upon man. And what a group we were. The big cheese was Renzo Capetto, alias Capo Rosetto, alias Rado Pizzetti, alias Zeppo Staccato, alias Shirley Lamour. At 15, he served his first stretch for rolling a drunk in the lobby of the Waldorf Astoria, New Year's Eve, 1934. In 1940, he was involved in an unsuccessful attempt to nominate Benito Mussolini for the Republican ticket. During the war, he was rejected by the Navy, Marines, and the SS. 
Now deported, he has retained his contacts with the syndicate and is still regarded as a dangerous character. Mary Bell Monahan, alias Mary Monahan Bell, alias Bell Mary Monahan, alias Monahan Mary Bell. They say she was a gun mall just because Lucky Luciano gave her a Rolls Royce every Christmas. And they can't really prove that she sneaked into the Hollywood Bowl with a Tommy gun and rubbed out the convention of police chiefs in 1956. Oh, I know that she got nailed cold when she was pushing heroin in a laundry room at Boys Town. But I'm willing to give anyone the benefit of the doubt. Especially when she's as crazy looking as Mary Bell. This is Happy Jack Monahan. So called because he developed a muscle spasm in his cheeks from watching too many Humphrey Bogart pictures. Happy Jack's record is brief. His only crimes having been committed after his sister, Mary Bell, talked Renzo into giving him a job. Up until that time, Happy Jack had been a tennis bum, sleeping under the bleachers at Forest Hills and mooching nickels in the BMT subway. Since taking up with Renzo, he has become a well-known dice loader and murderer. The most of the dark quartet is Pete Peterson, Jr., son of Pete Peterson, Sr., famed vaudeville bird mimic. Pete, Jr. inherited his father's talent for animal imitations, but unfortunately blew his brain out of whack while imitating a whooping crane at the Elks Convention picnic in Oshkosh in 1942. Since then, anyone has been able to convince Pete of anything. Renzo found him struggling along as a pickpocket at Jones Beach and took him with him in his exile. Since then, he has been Renzo's faithful servant, shining his shoes and rubbing out his enemies. In return, Renzo permits him to imitate any animal that comes into his head. That, for instance, was the mating call of the Himalayan yak. There they are, my shipmates. I didn't know where they were taking those unsuspecting Cubans, but I knew they were taking them. And so, with grim faces, we set our helm against the perilous future. Okay, now before I begin, does anyone anything to say? Pete? How about you, Jack? What do you think we should do? You up? Oh, now, honey, is that any way for Mary Bell's big man to talk? Oh, now, look. We've got to get rid of at least half of these Cubans without making the rest of them suspicious. a Cuban fisherman by the name of Hemingway. He got hooked on a sea monster in these waters a couple of years ago, and he was dragged for miles. Got a lot of publicity. We're going to show these boys the greatest sea monster they ever saw in their lives. Jack, in my trunk, there's some garden rakes used for weeding tomatoes. You get them and, and sharpen them like scalpers. Pete, you mix up a mess of olive oil and green ink and snag some seaweed from over the side. A jack. What are you going to do? Sharpen up the garden rakes? Good boy. Pete? How about you? Does he have to do that? All right, Jack. Pete. We've had a good life together, haven't we, baby? Mm, you know it, Boops. Winters in Tijuana, summers in Cicero. Remember that wonderful trip we took to Monte Carlo? You mean the time we heisted all those hundred dollar chips? Sure. I'll admit, I couldn't really hear anything through that door, but I was sure they were up to no good. I knew it was up to me to stop them. Now we're off again to parts unknown. It's like a second honeymoon. You know something? We ought to get married. Now, don't be a drag, baby. <laughs> How much Jack do you think's in that strong arm? There's plenty of Cuban sugar, though. What are we going to do with all of it? 
Oh, no. I always wanted to open up a home for the aged hoodlums. Betty, you got a heart as big as all outdoors. A government agent lives in constant peril. I devised my undetectable radio set using simulated hot dogs for knobs and tubes inside of dill pickles while watching a number of sewer workmen during lunch hour. It comes in mighty handy, believe you me. One little slip and I could be headed for Davy Jones' locker. Hello, Havana. This is Agent XK-150. Over. I'm making my first official report. So far, not too much has happened, but I'm anticipating. Renzo Capetto and his gang are on board as suspected. I am with them. I will call you again soon, one of these days. This is Agent XK-150 signing off. Gee, that looks good. Do you mind if I join you? The general says, Good morning, you gorgeous, beautiful creature. Would you ask the general to remove himself from my presence? Um, ella dice que muy buenos días para usted, mi general. Usted para mí es como una flor del mar, como un ángel de Neptuno sonriendo al mundo. The general says you are, um, you are a golden angel flower singing. Would you tell the general that I feel that he'd be most at home, barbecuing slowly over a hot spit? Um, ella dice que mi general es un hombre muy digno y de gran empuje. You must be a glutton for punishment. Oh. oh, now, what do you want? You're too good for this life. You're young and you're innocent. You should get out. If only get it, you're good. Are you unwell? The getting is great. You're a victim of circumstance. I try. I do try. You're a crazy mixed up kid. I am perfectly adjusted to my life of crime. Now, what is your story? Oh, well, you see, I'm beyond help, but you're not. You can find a clean young man to marry and... I haven't got the time. But I can help you marry, Belle. You can turn blue. Don't worry, Mary Bell. I'll save you. I die. That's a comforting alternative. A secret agent should never sleep. But there I was, dreaming of Mom's apple pie, while up on deck, Renzo and his cutthroats were taking the first step, killing an innocent Cuban, and pretending some imaginary monster did it, just so they would be panicked into changing course so that Renzo could steer them to his own picked destination.
But what none of us knew was that the monster invented by Renzo had already been invented by somebody else. By a couple of other monsters, I guess. What did he say? The general says what happened. Well, I have an idea, if you'd like to hear it. Please go ahead. Well, I don't think it was anything human that killed your soldiers. Seeing the tracks and the claw wounds on their bodies. Now, in my studied opinion, those soldiers were attacked by some weird creature from the sea. Came in, did your boys in, and vanished again. <laughs> it was so funny. That creature, how silly. Did you really think it? <laughs> what is la gracia? Este estúpido gringo cree que Alejandro lo mató un monstruo que salió de... Silencio. Este estúpido gringo tiene razón. Yo creo que esto solo ha sido hecho por un anfibio desconocido de aguas desconocidas. You are Colonel. Well, uh, the general says, uh, you're right. It is the most. Estas aguas son muy peligrosas. Debemos trazar una nueva ruta. The general says these waters are very dangerous. So we must plot a new course. Me dio vuelta a la derecha. Ya. De frente, marcha. Catch that? Our brave General Tostado didn't miss an excuse to blow the trip and change course. You think he's got a glint in his eye? Pure gold. Maybe we'll have to knock them all off. Oh. You boys are getting careless. I told you to kill one, not two. So what's that? I get your count? Okay, Pete. Uh, take the wheel. Jim, well, I, I thought it was only one. Well, I can't figure this out. So we were going somewhere I didn't know. Washington didn't know. Renzo didn't know. We all had to find out. Now, gentlemen, I think we ought to make our decision. Skull! <laughs> now, has anybody got an idea? About what? About where we're going. I thought it was to Ciudad Trujillo we were going. Oh, no, no. That's been changed. Well, General Costado thinks we ought to change course in order to escape the monster. Eh, por fin, ¿dónde vamos, General? Caracas, Venezuela. No. Oh, no, no. I think we ought to go to... Let's go to India. I've always wanted to see a Actually, I think we ought to go to Kong. It really swings this time of the year. Yeah, will you listen? So strange, my friends. I always had a secret desire. I always wanted to go to Bali, you know? Bali? Bali? Bali! No. Please tell the general that I am convinced we ought to go to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Él dice que está convencido el único sitio puede ir es a San Juan de Puerto Rico. This is Agent XK-150 calling Agent XK-120 via 190SL. Come in, Nevada. Now, the first thing we've got to think about is to escape this pinky monster. Now, if you take a look at the chart, you'll notice there's a lot of deep water just north of Puerto Rico. Too deep for the monster to live in. Well, how do you know he can't live in deep water? 
Because of his feet. He's a walker and he's got to stay at the bottom. All right, stupid? All right, stupid. Now, when we get to Puerto Rico, we'll take the strong box ashore. Now, as an American, I won't be noticed. I'll take a plane up to Ciudad Trajillo. Take the box with me. I can say unequivocally, without the slightest qualm of doubt, that this gang is heading for Bali. I think the government should watch for us at the Panama Canal. Over. The general says it's all right. We may go to Puerto Rico. But he wants to keep the strongbox out of his sight. Okay, it's a deal. <laughs> What do you think of it, Sparks? Looks like a Portuguese fishing vessel to me. Good guess. A giraffe. The Cuban Coast Guard. It looks like they're coming this way. Maybe they're looking for the gold. Hey, Pete. Tell Tostada and his men to stay below. Sparks, see if you can catch a fish. Everybody keep your guns handy. I don't have any guns, Mary Bell. Give him one of your guns. Ow! Give him one of your guns, Mary Bell. Now, let's appear casual. Mary Bell, sing a song. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Americans on a pleasure trip out here. Well, I don't think you've got any authority to search this ship. I think this gives us the authority to search this boat. Well, as you see, there's nothing on board. I haven't seen anything. I'm going to take a look down below. He didn't sound like a Cuban to me. I figured in this situation I'd better stick with Renzo, so I decided to knock out the leader of the Cubans with a fish I had on the end of my line. Sparks! Hey, good work, Pete. Listen, we better check the boat and see if there are any others. Maybe you can stop singing now. You have this terrific voice. Oh, if I could only push you overboard. Your talents are being allowed to molder away unknown to humanity. You could be a star. The toast to three continents, your name and life. Let me take you away and deliver you. I just can't believe that you're real. She was madly in love with me, only she didn't know it yet. I think I smell land. Are we almost there? Oh, about six or eight hours. Another lucky shooter. Pause the point. Pause. You're ravishing. You're sick. Listen, I have a plan. As soon as we get there, we'll wait for night. And when Renzo isn't looking, we'll jump off and swim for shore through shark-infested water so no one will follow us. Then we'll steal a sailing dinghy and head for Brazil. How do you like it? I think it's grand. You ought to do it. Well, I'm, I meant you, too. Honey, I wouldn't ride on the same bus with you. Now, Pete, I want you to listen carefully. Now, on the north coast of the big island is a teeny speck of land called La Isla del Borracho, named after one of Columbus's lieutenants. It should be deserted by now. We ought to be able to land there, huh? Good. Now, there's a reef around the island and a very narrow opening which we have to go through. I am going to run this yacht on the rocks, right at the entrance. Now, during the panic, We'll take the strong box, load it on a skiff, and head for shore. Now, Pete, when we get over 30 feet of water, I'll give you a signal. And then I want you to capsize the boat. You understand? Later, Pete, we'll come back and dive for it. You understand everything? Sure. Uh, uh, we'll be hit the rocks, yeah. and then we'll put the box in the skiff. And then we dump it over 30 feet of water so we can come back and get it. And that's because it's still a natural glass run. It shouldn't be on board anyway. Hello, Morocco. Look at the reefs.
Jones. All right, be calm, everybody. The boat's insured. According to plan, Renzo's and the monsters. Row, row, row your boat gently up the creek. Merrily, 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 I'm going to be sick. You know, this reminds me of one time on Lake Minnetonka. Louise Schmidt and I were paddling along, when what do you think happened? General says you have your orders as soon as he can estimate the situation. Well, you can tell our general Gotta be through giving orders around here. Now look, you men have no money and you have no guns and you're on U.S. soil. That's all right, I'm on your side. Pete, I want you to search the island and see if anybody lives here. Jack, you take one of the lifeboats and row to shore. Make your way to San Juan and rent us a fishing boat and plenty of diving gear. Uh-huh. Come on, boys. Let's go. Oh, Colonel, you see if you can get your men to build us a lean-to or something to keep the rain off. Atención. De frente. Marche. That won't be necessary, baby. Why? Well, the way I figure it, these Cubans aren't very much at diving. But Jack, Pete, and I are all pretty good spear fishermen. We'll go down, find the strong box, and hide it in a hole in the reef. After that, we'll tell the Cubans that it's no use and give up. It'll be safe there for months, even years, until we're ready to come back and get it. You like it? Booksy, sometimes you are so smart you make me sick. Get me Havana, Cuba, 652314. Uh, Cuba. Six, cinco, duo, tres, uno, cuatro. Uh, oh, listen, I, I don't have the right chain, so would you uh, mind uh, charging that to my home phone, which is in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, in USA? It is... 762691. Uh, Estada Unida, Washington. Uh, seis, uh, seis, uh, duo, seis, nueve, duo, duo, whatever. Um, right, thanks a lot. That service is terrific. 
Hello, Santa Domingo Bar. Is there a girl there playing chess? You're right, I want to talk to her. Hello. I'll give you all my utilities and all my railroads for Park Place. Not a chance. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect your two hundred dollars. XK one twenty. Right. XK one fifty. Right. Listen, I uh, I can't really talk now. I don't know exactly what's happening or where I am, but I have the feeling that this case is about to bust wide open. I can't talk now. Someone's waiting to use the phone, but I'll keep in touch. Did you get that? Repeat the last part of that message. I'll keep in touch. Did you get that? Right. Which way do I turn this Dakota pin? Left. Left? Right. Right. You to meet Renzo Capetta, my sister Mary Bell, Hi. Mr. Pete Peterson, and, well, I don't know who the large woman with him is. What, Pina Perez? Hi. Hello, everybody. You found this woman in San Juan? Well, she was living in a sort of sorority house down by the docks. She's awful friendly. Why don't you come on with me, honey? I'll show you our sorority house. 
Sergeant Capello, I have the honor to report that my men will be ready in one hour. Ready for what? Dive to the Strandbox. You mean your men are divers? Yes, they are Cuban Army frogmen. I have situation well on hand. Mary Bell was weakening, as I'm sure you've noticed. Then she came into my life. I didn't see her coming, but somehow I sensed her presence and knew that my life was changed forever. Hello, who are you? Hermenita Rodrigo. Sparks Moran. As a trained espionage agent, I could tell that she was attracted to me. But I wanted Maribel, and Maribel wanted Renzo, and Renzo wanted the gold. Hey! 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 Spark! Spark! I'm an idiot! Let's keep this thing firm! You all right? Oh, yeah! All right, we're ready. What's the keep it on? I don't know, but I'm ready! Vamos from Dallas Cubanos! A su marginos! for the strong box had begun, but the sea was cluttered up with Cubans, dispersed by General Tostada to search independently. All those Cubans alone in the deep. This was a chance for Renzo to again become the sea monster. A lonely Cuban had found one of the many wrecks on the bottom. and Renzo had found the lonely Cuban. executed. The victim was dead. The killers delighted, but not satisfied. Renzo must have another quart of Latin blood. We waited, sensing the dangers below, while the unholy three sought new prey. didn't take them long to find it. What happened to you? What's this, Todd? No, it was a monster. Oh, you mean a monster? A real, live, honest-to-goodness monster with claws and everything. Oh, you're nuts. Hold this thing. Carmelita, it's too dangerous for you here. Let's run away and live a little. No, no, I'm in love with the Fox. Fox Moran? Let's see. Well, how can you be in love with him? He's an idiot. You ought to be in love with me. No, I'm in love with him. And I don't care if he'll never see you again. Oh, if I'd only pay my life insurance premium, I'd kill myself. Oh, no, no, no. Don't kid 
yourself over an hour. No, you come with me. I'll tell you. Come with me to the jungle. You see one jungle, you see them all. You come with me, you see and you like. Hello, girl. Senor, I'm very much afraid of this monster. Well, let's just pick up and go home. No, I am an officer. We will not stop until we have this tramba. From now on, we'll dive with spear guns. Crazy. Mango! 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 Your heart, teacher. Uh, this girl is my daughter. Her name is Mango. Mango? Mm. Oye, me, la novia lo dejó ahora por un idiota y el pobrecito, tú sabes, quería matar. Pero yo le dije que no lo hiciera, que él necesitaba una persona que lo alegrara. Uh, I was telling her what that no good of Carmelita do to you. I was telling her to cheat you up. Oh, gee, thanks, Porcina. But it really wasn't necessary. Oh, you not like mango? Oh, yeah, I, I like it. Siento mucho lo que le ha pasado, señor. Es algo que le pasa a todo el mundo con mucha frecuencia. Es lo mejor. He no speak good English, señor. Oh, I don't think that's going to matter at all. Okay. Uh, I'm going back now. Mr. Pete Peterson Jr. He is waiting for me now. Well, adios, por si. Adios. Are you all right, Porcina? Oh, I'm all right, my hero. <laughs> hey, who was happy, Jack? Oh, come on, I take you to them. Yes. Tú eres muy dulce, aunque un poco estúpido. Oh, I don't know what you said, Mango. But it sure was wonderful. Mi madre quiere que yo sea agradable con los extranjeros. Es como una especie de bienvenida para los turistas. I feel the same way, Mango. I never felt like this in my whole life before. A ella le gusta que yo los entusiasme para poder venderle sombreros de palma de coco y sandalias. Oh, I know, Mango. I know. Well, here comes Keaton for scene. Se parecen a los premios más baratos en una galería de tiro. Hi, Jack. Who's your friend? Well, this is Mango Perez, Porcina's daughter. Gee! She's almost as pretty as her mother. Yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah, but can't she do imitations? Well, I don't know. And I don't care, because I love her. Gosh, you're going to marry her? Yeah, well, why not? Why not? If you marry Mango, and I marry Porcino, I'll be your father. Woo! Forget about boy Paul with that. Oh, we cannot talk here. We cannot talk. My mushu gonna talk you. He made big trouble. Yeah, I just had a fight with him. You know, Pete, I'm getting tired of all this running around. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to marry Mango and settle down here. Well, I could start a tennis club. They don't have clubs. They have rackets. You know, you're right. But you know something, though? 
I'd like to do the same thing myself. Say, why don't we rub them all out? And this way, we can keep the strong box for ourselves. Oh, yes. Well, even Mary Bell? Oh, gee. I don't know about her. Well, she is my sister. Of course, we could keep her around to do the housekeeping. Sure. And she'll get over losing Renzo. Sure. Well, how about it? Is it a deal? Sure. Besides, they've been cheating on their income tax anyway. Ay, ya yo me estoy cansando de esta jeringonza. Vamos a nadar quién? Mango. She won't go swimming. All right. All right. Go. We're speeding the boys. They know we should be diving this afternoon. I think they're somewhere in the jungle. What's this? Well, what is this? This man's wife is playing around with Mr. Pierce. He's very angry. That's tough. Mire, lo único que puedo hacer es venderla. Yo creo que 50 dólares si no te vas al día está en orden. This man wants to sell you his wife for 50 dollars in a case of rob. Television nuts. Ah, uh, dice que está loco. Quien yo no acepto esa clase de insulto a nadie. Ahora le fijo 100 dólares. Carmelita, will you talk to him? We're busy. Oh, sure. I would tell him to cut down to 20 for a fifth of gin. Gin nothing? Who wants to buy his improbable wife? Come on, General Testado, let's get going. Soldados cubanos, de nuevo a sumergirnos. Una, dos, y tres. Una, dos, y tres. Una, dos. All right, baby. Listen, you hold on to these because I can't use them without Peter Jack to help me, huh? I'll keep them warm for Lorenzo Capetto had at last found the strong box. And the unknown partner had found Renzo Capetto.
did you have to do it, Renzo? Why did I have to do what? Don't play games with me. Why'd you kill her? Jack, I swear I had nothing to do. I said don't play games. We all saw it. The same five incisions and those ground marks on that stupid toilet plunger. Why'd you ask Mary, Bell? I gave her the rakes before I went under. That won't play. You had two more in your trunk, just in case you said, remember? Yeah, I remember, but they're still there. I can't convince them, honey. Maybe you can. Sorry, honey. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to go along with Jack. You think I did it? Well, what else can I think? You made that monster up out of thin air, and I don't try to tell me it's real. I'm not that stupid. Well, I am. I always believed in it. But it's got to be real. Either that or the Cubans are trying to kill us off. I can't buy that. I don't care what you buy. From now on, we're going to die with spirits like the rest of them. We've got to get rid of the rest of those Cubans as quickly as possible. Now, we'll start tomorrow morning with Tostado. Jack? Yeah. Pete? death notwithstanding. The courageous general and two of his men dove once more into the deadly sea. But, as usual, they were not alone. Renzo waited for them to separate. One pulled away and then there were two. Tostada went on alone into the forbidding void with the killers closing in. The giant observer stood watching over a pathetic bit of cloth, all that remained of mango. At last, Tostada had found his gold in his own watery grave. died as all generals should. His greedy murderers let his body drift away while they congratulated each other. Happy Jack found the scrap of a dress and knew what had happened to his beloved. Suddenly, You've got to leave, Mary Bell, and there's no one to help you but me. Oh, Mary Bell, I love you so much I could split. Get on! What do you do to my man? Oh, shut up! Oh. It was dusk. 
I could tell because the sun was going down. You were right, senor. All my army is finished. I knew when the general died. I don't care about the fox anymore. Let him off. I don't want him to kill any more of my men. Neither do I, Colonel. I think we must go to Ciudad Trujillo in the morning. You can go anywhere you like. I'm going home. To America? America? No, I can't go back there anymore. Cicero. Oh. I've got an uncle there who's been after me for years to help him stamp grapes. It's beginning to appeal to me. Mary Bell hates me. I know. But I love you. It's kind of nice having somebody love you. Why don't you try to love me? You might like it. I guess I can try. She pressed her hot Latin lips against mine. And I forgot everything but Carmelita. But our silent partner was not going to let me forget. This was it. There was but one thing a responsible, trusted representative of the United States government could do at a time like this. Get out of there. There I go. I'd just like one more chance to explain. Please. All right, folks. It doesn't really matter. No matter where you go or what you do or who you kill. I love you till the day I die. We'd have to live on the salary of an American spy, which is forty-one fifty a week. I don't care. You're so strong, so intelligent. You see how you solve the whole case? You're the smartest little pill in the whole world. I'm not really as smart as I look, Connor Lady. You see, I, I have to admit that all that time I thought Renzo and the Cubans were trying to steal that strong box, but I was wrong. The real killer was a monster. So what? You're beautiful. So I got the girl. And guess who got the gold?
I will talk to you of art, for there is nothing else to talk about, for there is nothing else. Life is an obscure hobo bumming a ride on the omnibus of art. Burn gas, buggies, and whip your sour cream of circumstance and hope. And go ahead and sleep your bloody head off. What is not creation is Graham Cracker. Let it all crumble to feed the creator. The artist is, all others are not. A canvas is a canvas. Or a painting. A rock is a rock. Or a statue. A sound is a sound. Or is music. Or an art. Where are John, Joe, Jake, Jim, Jerk? Dead, dead, dead. They were not born before they were born. They were not born. Where are Leonardo, Rembrandt, Ludwig? Alive, alive. the multitude, the multitude of fishes. Feed them to the fishes for liberal Nourish the artist. Stretch their skin upon an eel. Give him cancer. Crush their bones into a paste that he might mold them. Let them die. And by their miserable death become the clay within his hand. Or an art. For all that is comes through the eye of the artist. The rest are blind fish swimming in the cave of aloneness. Swim on, you maudlin, muddling, maddened fool. Breathe with one bright and sunny night. Some artist will bait a hook and let you bite upon it. Fight hard and die. In his stomach, you are very close to immortality. Walter? Walter, what are you doing here? I was looking at Carla's picture. Why, I pay you to look at pictures. Come on, get to work. I was just looking. There are empty cups all over the place. Clear them out. You shouldn't be so rough on him, Lenny. Hey, say, Walter. All right. There you go, cut. Fine, man. How about you? In there, Mark. Valdez, Vice. Yeah, LaCroix checking in. Who took over a couple of minutes ago? Anything new at the door? Well, nothing you can pound nails in. A couple of hustlers. One of them short, fat, brunette, named Skinny. The other one was short also. She was bleached. Name of Fat. Probably, you didn't get it. They didn't give any pictures, though. Guess you can keep an eye on. Okay, any head? Well, Jerry Sachs looked like he was straight. I'm sure he's on it anyway. Didn't see any pushes around the place. Lou said he'd check out on Jerry. He'll sound him out later if he gets any higher. I guess it's about it. Okay, uh, go on home and get a good night's sleep, you think. Okay, so long. Everyone listen to my new poem. I think they really heard it. I heard it, Mr. Brock. Thank you, Walter. I'm sure you did. Bring on the multitude with a multitude of fishes. Feed them to the fishes for liver oil to nourish the artist. <laughs> that was word for word. Yes, sir. I've forgotten. You mean you don't remember your own poem? I refuse to say anything twice. 
Repetition is death. I don't get it. When you repeat something, you are reliving a moment, wasting it, severing it from the other end of your life. I believe only in new impressions, new stimuli, new life. I thought you believed that life is an obscure hobo bumming a ride on a I do believe that, Walter, but I also believe creative living. To be uncreative, you might as well be in your grave or in the army. They tried to draft me once. I couldn't pass the test. Walter, Leonard's looking at you. He's just my god. Walter has a clear mind. One day something will enter it, feel lonely, and leave again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, cats, yes. If you want to know how beatniks live, William and me will show you. We'll introduce you to some wild one. You may even discover an artist of your own. And how much is that going to cost? What cost? A couple of bucks. You want to meet some beatniks, don't you? Oh, no, it's the artist. I'm just crazy about artists. All well, that is comes through the eye of the artist. The rest are just blind fish swimming in a cave of aloneness. Oh, you must be an artist. And working as a bus boy, too. Feed him that he will be satisfied. The artist is. All others are not. That's most intriguing. Are you a painter? Oh, well, no, I, I work... Uh, I'm working on something that's not ready yet. What is it, man? Finger painting? Hey, draw me a picture of a house, Walter. Make some smoke coming out of the chimney. Well, I am working on something. I'll show you soon. Walter? your nice bowl of soup won't take but a minute oh it's okay i i can fix myself something besides i got something important to do oh, oh say walter did you see anything of frankie tonight when you went out i didn't see him at all but, well if you do tell him i got a nice fresh piece of halibut for him tell him that i mean do you think he'll understand he's only a cat oh. good night walter Yeah. 
canvas or a painting. A rock is a rock or a statue. A sound is a sound or it's music. Sure. 
Well, it sure looks steady now. You, you want to buy it? Buy it? That thing? Scare people out of the place. Don't be silly. It's tremendous. Look at the detail. The anatomy is perfect. Look at the expression on its face. How come you put a knife into it? I didn't mean to. Just got carried away, huh? Well, all right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it in the corner of the alcove. If it sells, we'll split 50-50, okay? Sure. Does this mean I'm an artist? Maybe so. You can do other things as well. well all that is comes through the eye of the artist. Yeah, you're a real artist now. I go in back and scrub down those garbage cans. Much now. You really like it? We like it. And boy! What's the matter? You losing? How do you like my cat? You make this thing mad? Uh huh. It's crazy. Crazy. You wanna buy it? For me, man. I'm tapped. Get to work. Hey, hey, Walter. Come here a minute. Hey, congratulations, man. Walter, you're famous. I saw your cat. Did you like it, Mr. Brock? You may call me Maxwell. Now, how'd you do it, Walter? All right. Just put some clay and fixed it up. <laughs> Attention. Attention, everyone. As you pass through these yellow portals, I am sure you noticed on your right a small clay figure. And assume this transfixed effigy to be the work of a master sculptor. And indeed, so it is. That master sculptor is in our midst. He is none other than Walter Paisley, our very own busboy whose hands of genius have been carrying away the empty cups of your frustration. Mark well this lad. His is the silent voice of creation. But in the dark, rich soil of humility, he blossoms as the hope of our nearly sterile century. Uh, beautiful, Maxwell. Bring me an espresso, Walter. Uh, Maxwell, really beautiful. Thank you. Man, you are in. Oh, Walter, it well, was wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. 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 yes, yes. This is my man. Yes, yes. Listen, man, you got a pen? Huh? Hey, Bob, what's happening? Making a big scene for Walter. Who'd he shoot? He made a cat. Out of clay. See you around. Yeah, later. Did you hear them, Mr. DeSantis? They all like my cat. Yeah, very good. Now look, Walter, you must be tired. Why don't you take the rest of the night off? Oh, I don't... No, 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 you got it coming. Besides, you're creating an incident. When people are applauding, they don't know to cross me. So go on home and work on something. Make another cat. Well, I haven't got another cat. Well, just go to the movies. Please, Walter, go. All right, Mr. DeSantis. Good night. Good night, Walter. Walter? Walter, wait a minute. Oh, hello, Mayolia. Walter, I dug it. My cat? It was the most wonderful, wildest, like, wickiest thing I've ever seen. Walter, you've done something to me. Something deep down inside of my piranha. I have? Oh, Walter, I want to be with you. You're creative. You've got a hot light bulb glowing inside of you. And I want to be warmed by it. Gee, that's nice of you, Naolia. Walter, take me away from here. Take me away to some cool blue place. Gasp. 
I can't. I gotta go home. Oh, then I'll go home with you. Oh, no, Mrs. Swicket wouldn't like that. She's my landlady. Isn't there anything I can do for you? I don't think so, Naolia. Oh, Walter, I can't let you just split like this. I've got to do something. I've got to contribute. You don't have to do anything. Wait. Wait, there is one thing I can do. One little thing. Don't leave, Walter. I want to give you something. Something that will make you remember me. Put it in your pocket. Now go, Walter. Don't look back. Just go. with you. Walter, do I have to point this at you? You're going to shoot me. No, don't shoot Walter, me. Walter, just relax. No, you're going to shoot me. Now just relax. No, don't shoot just me. Shut up, Walter. No, you're going to shoot me. Don't care of myself, Mrs. Swicket. Yeah, I can see that. Look at this pad. It's terrible. What did you ever clean it up? And when did you change these sheets last? They look like they're alive. 
That's wicked. I gotta meet some friends in a little while, and I gotta take a shower. Well, well, no, why don't you clean up you this stuff? Oh, please, What's the matter? wicked. Size figure. Crazy. What is it called? 
Uh, murdered man. When do we get to see it? Oh, any time. Hey, that's a pretty far out name for a statue. I saw a statue once. It was called The Third Time Phyllis Saw Me, She Exploded. Well, what kind of a statue was that? I don't know. Made out of driftwood and dipped in fluoric acid. Very wild. <coughs> What's wrong, Leonard? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's the food in this dump. Oh, man, you should try the sorrel sewer. They got wheat germ bagel. Too much. Excuse me, please. I think he really is sick. So who isn't? Sanders! Well, I've been trying to get you all evening. Got to make a call. Got to call Lieutenant Valdez. Listen, I was wrong about my wife. She wants that cat after all. Do you hear me? I'll give you that hundred dollars for the cat. I can't talk to you just now. All right, then, two hundred. No. No. Three hundred dollars and that's tops. Three hundred dollars for the cat? <laughs> I know I'm going out of my mind, but I've been collecting art pieces all over Europe for years. And this boy, Walter Paisley, has got it. I want to buy his first work. And to make very sure that I get it, I'll pay you five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars for the cat and the first look at his next stuff. Mm -hmm. Just now, but I'll have him back in a few days. Then you can have it for the five hundred dollars. Oh, thank you, sir. I think I've made a bargain. Call me when you're ready. Good night. Walk behind and stop the sky. Larry, you feel better? Listen, I'm going over to Walter's later after the place closes to see murdered man. You feel up to coming along? The rope was fixed around his neck and a watcher behind his ear. And the prison bell was tolling, but Tim Evans didn't hear. Saying, go down, you murderer, go down. Look at the size of it. Well, it's, it's not really that big. I got it on kind of a stamp. Let's see it. I'm a little nervous. I, I never did a person before. You can do anything if you set your mind to it. It's out of here. You want me to open a window? Oh, come on, Walter. Take off the sheet. Don't you like it? Walter, it's a masterpiece. I've never seen anything like it before. And I hope I never see anything like it again. Neither do I. It's hideous. And it's eloquent. It expresses modern man and all his self-pity. How did you ever find that in yourself, Walter? Well, it, it wasn't easy. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing at all. I've never seen anyone so squeamish. What's your opinion, Leonard? Don't ask me. Oh, come on. Now, even you must see its value. Do you think that you or I could have conceived of such a thing, much less executed it? Well, then admit it. It's a work of genius. I admit it. Then let's take it down to the yellow door. No. Why not? I'll tell you. Well, you... Cover it up again, please, huh? Please! Thank you. What is all this nonsense? Why do you want to hide it? Well, I've been thinking. I, I didn't realize how much talent Waller actually had. It would be wrong to show his pieces one at a time. Dead wrong. You're right. He should build a collection first. Idea. Maybe when it's big enough, we can have a show. A show? Yeah. Uh, just for me? No! Well, not exactly. I mean, you can take years and years. It's getting hot again. Well, it would take you years to make that many statues, but your work would be featured. It's a wonderful idea, Walter. It's the only way to gain recognition. All the big art critics and art dealers will be there. It'll be an event. Yes, then we can unload. We sell this stuff for a lot more. 
Uh, the show. Uh, how soon can we go? Well, don't rush things. It takes time. But first of all, you've got to stop making these horrible statues. Carla and I will guide you. Maybe you can turn to freeform. Freeform? Well, that's the movement today. With his talent for realism? But you can see the direction his realism takes. It's unhealthy. But, but you said I was a genius. I don't want to be a busboy anymore. Yes. Maybe you got a point there. You shouldn't keep working at the yellow door. But I'm sure that man is going to buy you a dead cat. So here, here's your fee in advance. Fifty dollars. And if you need more, I've got it, so don't worry. I've got great faith in you, Walter. Gee, fifty dollars for something I made. Now you're a professional. Let's go. Okay. Good night, Walter. Keep up the good work. Yeah, but don't rush things. You got all the time in the world. Come on, Carla. Good night. Slavian white wine. Yes, sir, Mr. Paisley. Good evening, Walter. Maxwell, how have you been? I see the rewards of achievement have come your way. Well, after all, I'm a successful sculptor now. Indeed. Hey, man, dig Walter the Wigger. He's coming out like he just cured cats. What a slate to see. Crazy. I was just suggesting to Walter that he try his hand at free form. Why do you suggest anything to Walter? Are you the spokesman for society come to put your stifling finger in his eye? Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, now, who invited these two down from the clouds? Maxwell, you who? To the table, bring a bowl. I may be sick. It's Alice the Awful. Come to spread cheer and the color. Look at my sun tan, everybody. Do we have to? Where have you been, Alice? I went up to Big Sur to look for Henry Miller. You didn't find him, I hope. No, he's in Europe. Good. Why is the bus boy sitting here? I'm not the busboy anymore. That's right. Walter has become a sculptor. Oh, really? I'm a model, you know. I only charge $25 an hour. Would you like to do me? I just might. Never mind that. Walter's going to try free form. There you go again. I may take my business to the sorrel sewer. As a matter of fact, I was going to suggest to Walter that he try a female figure. As a change from the violent death theme. He really should, Walter. You know what? If you like, I'll be your model for free. I couldn't. Not you. Man, if you're going to be an artist, you've got to do nudes and nudes. Right, right, right. Ain't nobody an artist unless he does nudes. Will you get them out of here before we wind up in night court? Oh, let's change the subject. I'm sick of hearing about sculpture. Nobody knows how to do that anymore, much less the busboy from the yellow door. Who, who do you think you're talking about? Don't shout at me. I don't like you. <laughs> Nobody asked for your opinion, Walter. You're just a simple little farm boy, and the rest of us are all sophisticated beatniks. That's all, man. Let's split. Yeah, man. I gotta make me some air. You make them leave. 
What did I do? The first beneficial service of your benighted life. It proves we're all good for something. Are you saying that this bus boy is better than I? Yes. I think this whole bit about him being a sculptor is just a big put on for my benefit. That's not true. I am a sculptor. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Make something out of this. There. Hand. <laughs> that isn't a real hand. If you were a sculptor, you'd create something for me. A <laughs> harpoon would be very nice. I'm going home. Alice? You're obnoxious. But he's such an idiot. Good night. Listen, Torp, why don't you get out of here and let me go to bed? I didn't finish talking to you. I decided to make that female figure after all. Oh? And I'd like you to pose for it. Remember what I said about my price? Twenty-five dollars an hour. If you want to pay it, I don't mind posing. When do I start work? Tonight. You mean right now? Uh-huh. Wait till I get my sweater. Some of the guys help me. Is it murdered, sure. man? It's better. Come on. Orders. Put it in the middle of the room. When did you do this, Walter? Last night. It doesn't take me very long. I should say not. Well, let's see it, man. I'm on 
honored to know this man. Do you think it's nice? Hey, she's beautiful. Do you think it's nice in a murdered man? Oh, I don't know, Walter. It's impossible to choose. They're both great. Walter, I'm deeply moved. Show my appreciation. I'm going to give a party tonight at the Yellow Door. In your honor. And I shall compose a poem. in an orgy of togetherness. The highway of life cuts sharply through the shady ghettos and the ivy-covered tombs, and laughter rings from every time capsule in the star-spangled firmament. And in the deep freeze, it is the children's hour, and no one knows that Duncan is murdered, and no one knows that Walter Paisley is born. Duncan knows, Tuesday sunrise knows, Alley cats and garbage cans and steaming pavements and you and I and the nude descending the staircase and all such things with foam. We know that Walter Paisley is born. Ring rubber bells, beat cotton gong, strike silken cymbals, play leathern flutes, the cats and cans and you and I and all such things with foam. We shall hear Walter Paisley is born. And the soul becomes flesh. Walter Paisley is born. <laughs> Marvelous, darling, marvelous. Ma'am, like that was the greatest gas I ever heard. Crazy, what did he say? Didn't you hear him? No, man, I'm too far out. <laughs> Maxwell, that was magnificent. I feel so elegant. Walter deserved every word of it. Makes me so glad I'm aware. <laughs> did you hear what he said? Yes, Walter. All about me. It's true, isn't it? Every word. You better hold off on the bubbly, artist. Yeah, why? You might talk too much. <laughs> what would I say? Most anything I expect. Are you two trying to ignore the rest of us? Oh, not me, Maxwell. I wouldn't ignore you. I know what it is to be ignored. Tell us what you're going to do next, Walter. I'm going to make the most wonderful, wildest, wickiest things you've ever seen. I'm going to make big statues and little statues, tall statues and short statues. I'm going to make statues of nobodies and statues of famous people, statues of actors and poets and people who sell things on television and a statue of the mayor, and some opera singers and their intimate friends. And everybody will say, Walter, let me shake your hand. It's been a real pleasure to have known you. <laughs> Alley cats and garbage cans, they know that Walter Paisley is born. Ring rubber bells, beat cotton guns, strike silken symbols. Play leather blues. <laughs> Tell us what you're gonna do next, Walter. I'm gonna make big statues, little statues, movie stars and poets, and guys who sell things on television. And in the mayor and some officers. That's what you're gonna do next, Walter. What am I gonna do next? What am I gonna do next? 
I gotta do something before they forget. I know what it's like to be ignored. Creation's graham crack. Let them all crumble to feed the create. Oh, faded, you must be nuts. stupid, bitter poetry. Listen, you've got to stop it right away. I'm beginning to feel responsible. Why? What did you do? Never mind. Walter, I've decided to have that show for you right away. If, when Carla comes, we'll have her work up some nice invitations. We'll have them printed up. We'll invite the critics and the art collectors. We'll tell them. I don't see why we can't go. Mr. Leonard DeSantis is afraid to have you come. You who buy his coffee and lure his tourists. You are the heart and soul and meat of the yellow door. He slighted you. Did you get an invitation? I did not. But I'm going anyway. Not to drink his champagne, but to see Walter's triumph. After that, we go no more. Time, Maxwell. I won't say good luck, Walter. Why not? It would imply you could not succeed on your ability alone. Do you look so handsome? I do. So do you. <laughs> I mean, you look so pretty. Oh, thank you. Are you ready? Oh, we've got plenty of time. I know, but I, I wanted to talk to you. Okay, we can go now if you like. Bye. Later, man, later. Swing. Man, why do you suppose Walter wants to get her alone? You suppose he could be physically attracted to her? No, man, he ain't the type. He don't get enough vitamin E. Maxwell gave him a bottle of wheat germ oil once. Maybe he just started taking it. What did you want to talk to me about, Walter? Well, uh, what kind of people do you like, Carla? Oh, thinking people. Artistic people, I guess. You think I'm artistic? Of course I do. That means you like me. I like you very much, Walter. I, I, I thought you did. I can't how you kissed me the other night. Oh, that was for your sculptor of the girl. You're nude in the chair. Carla, uh, 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 I, I've been alone for a long time, and, and I know you've been alone, because you never seem to go out with anybody, even though Leonard's always asking you to go out with him, and I uh, just... What are you trying to say? Carla? I don't want to make statues anymore. I want to get married to you. How long 
have you been thinking about this, Walter? Oh, for, for a long time. Ever since you first came to work at the club. You were the only one who was ever nice to me. I didn't know you loved me until you kissed me. Walter, I do like you. And I did kiss you. But that was because of your work. There's more to being in love with someone than just that. You mean you don't love me? I'm afraid that's what I mean. But... But you gotta love me. Why do you think I made that statue of Alice? Walter, I'm sorry, but... You I... just can't be sorry. I want to marry you. Now calm down, Walter, and let's go in there and... And then maybe when the show's over, we can talk about it. Well, I want to talk about it. I get it. I see the whole thing now. Nobody knows that Walter Paisley is born. Carla. Will you do one favor for me? Just about anything, Walter. Would you let me make a statue of you? Would you really like to? That'd make me very happy. Okay. Tonight. I'll make a statue of you tonight. Okay? Come on. about, but no craftsman. This man knows his anatomy. I'd give 1500 for this. After you read my review, it'll probably cost you 5000 <laughs> So what's the trouble? Why should you be so depressed? Have you heard the things they're saying? You can make 25000 on these pieces alone. I thought you put money down. I do, but 25000 Leave me alone. Some cappuccino, man. We got the bread. We're not open for business. This is an art exhibit. No bumps. Get out. Uh, that art is a bum, man. Yeah, he's over. Yeah, well, that's his problem. All right, man. All right. We'll wait outside. Yeah, you wait outside.
case. I'm going with you. Hey, man, what is the score? Walter Pinkley's a murderer. Ah, man, I saw him chasing Carla down the street. work. 